up here on top of the summit of Mount Chase here in northern Maine. We're about uh, 2,400 feet above sea level, I guess. Just climbed to the very top. Excuse me while I get a pick a wild blueberry. But I thought I'd do a video at a beautiful spot like this on uh, why are New Agers blamed for the coming New World Order? Um, if you type in New Age exposed or New Age movement or whatever else, just New Age movement here on YouTube or anywhere, you're going to find it's mostly Christians, uh, professing Christians anyhow, that are kind of always coming out and attacking the New Age movement. And I'm not a New Ager, I'm not a fan of uh, the New Age philosophy, whatever. But when you actually start to examine what the Bible says, you see that New Agers are not the real enemy. And it's ironic because I'm bringing this subject up because New Agers get attacked in the church buildings and yet the real guilty party that the scripture identifies that brings in the New World Order, they're somehow not mentioned. Very convenient. I'm going to give you, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five reasons why New Agers cannot bring in the New World Order. All right. We're going to go to the last book in the King James Bible. And by the way, if you are a New Ager, uh, you would do quite well to get a King James Bible and actually read it and see that uh, what is called modern Christianity um, has no basis at all in the King James Bible. There are no church buildings in the King James Bible. Um, there's no Sunday best. There's no all the other trappings of modern organized religion. Uh, it's not there. But uh, so please just open your mind a little bit here. Uh, I'm not an enemy of the New Age movement, okay? Um, I'm a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, that makes me your friend. Even if I, you disagree with me and I disagree with you, um, I'm still looking out for your best interests. All right, I'm not going to burn anybody at the stake or imprison anybody or anything else. Um, that's the Catholics that do that. They're the ones that are really involved in the future New World Order. And they're the ones that the modern church buildings are very eerily silent about. In particular, the Jesuit order. But I'll say more about that as we continue. Revelation chapter 13, verse 4. Here's reason number one. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? Okay. Um, reason number one that the New Age movement cannot be behind the New World Order movement that's coming is, number one, these people are worshiping a man who makes war. These people like fighting. They love, they love death and war and taking over and empire building and the whole thing. Uh, I'm not really too familiar with New Agers really wanting that. And I realize there's variation within the New Age movement. Sure, certainly, sure. But uh, the people that, are, that just froth at the mouth when it comes to war and killing and things for the, for the Holy Church is Catholicism. And the derivative of Catholicism, which is Islam. That's why Islam and Catholicism have both had their holy wars down through the centuries. Uh, and you really study it out, it's mostly them that are behind the wars. Why are New Agers blamed for that? And also, they say, well, you see these coexist stickers, you know, and, and things, and this is New Age, Co coexist. See, all the world religions coming into one big super religion. That is nonsense. How can you control the whole world as a totalitarian dictator when everybody gets to do their own thing? not going to happen. And if you study history, you'll see that the Catholic Church for many, many centuries had complete control of the religions out there and, and the kingdoms as well. See, they believe in the temporal and the, and the uh, spiritual swords, that they hold both. They hold the temporal, that in other words, they should rule over everything. This, according to the Vatican, this belongs to the Vatican. All the world belongs to the Pope. He's the king of the world. All right, they have, they have the right to rule all countries. They do it secretly through their knighthoods and things, the Knights of Malta, the Knights of the Equestrian Order, the Knights of uh, Columbus, different degrees within those knighthoods, certainly. But the whole point I'm trying to make here is uh, the New Agers aren't doing that. Um, the New Agers are not going to bring have just one religion. That's nonsense. Most New Agers I've ever met are very much into people just doing their own thing and you know, I'm not going to judge you. You do. You want to do your thing. That's your truth. That's you know, you can't run a totalitarian world religion that way. Number two, you have uh, 
political control. The Catholics do that, not the New Agers. Let's look at this. Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Does the New Age movement control all political realms and, and things? Show me some prominent New Ager that the kings of the earth are coming and bowing themselves down to him. And you got to come and meet with this prominent New Ager. I don't know of any. I'm not saying that world leaders never have any kind of New Age leanings. Certainly some do. But the one leader that they all go to, they all submit themselves to, is the Pope. They all do. I wonder why that would be. Jump down to verse 18 there in Revelation chapter 17. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Is there a new age city that reigns over the kings of the earth? No. Then why are new agers blamed for the coming new world order? Um, what is the city that reigns over the kings of the earth? That would be a Vatican city, a city state. It is actually its own government. But they're somehow exempted from bringing in the coming New World Order. Well, they had power in the past, but they don't have power anymore. It's nonsense, absolute nonsense. And why are these church buildings promulgating this false teaching that it's all the New Agers' fault? The New Age, it's the New Age. All oh, the New Age, they're bringing in the Antichrist Kingdom. All oh, the New Age, the New Age. It's not the New Age. Okay? Reason number three. Look at the collars. Look at the identity of this great city, this mystery Babylon here. Revelation chapter 17, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet collar and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Uh, again, is that the New Age movement? It's not the New Age movement. It's the Roman Catholic Church, clearly. Purple, the bishops, scarlet, the cardinals. Look at the big processions over at the Vatican. It's purple and scarlet in abundance. And they got gold staffs and gold this and gold that. And they go to do the Eucharist thing and they take the big golden cup, the big chalice there, and they, they slowly elevate it and things. It's all Baal worship. That's what they're symbolizing. They're sun, sun worshipers, the ancient Baal worshiping cult in a modern form with Bible names now. So people think it's Christian. Um, it's not Christian. Never has been, nor will it ever be. Okay, and again, if you're a new ager and you've been poisoned by the Catholic Church, you were raised in it and whatever, and you rebelled against it and you've left it, and you don't call that Christianity, all right? It's not Christian. Please understand that. Give you another reason here that the new age movement is not could not possibly be uh, bringing in the new way the new age new world order thing. Okay, we have uh, murdering of saints. Revelation chapter 17, verse 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. John is looking and he's seeing this great city and she's drunken. It isn't that she's killed a couple Christians. She's drunken. She just, just can't get enough of killing Christians. And you know what's interesting? They back in the in Spain in particular, they had the Spanish Inquisition. And they were, they were just constantly putting heretics on trial and torturing them and things and murdering them slowly. Uh, and you say, well, whew, I'm glad that that's done. Uh, no, actually, the Office of Inquisition still exists. Pope Benedict XVI was actually head of it as Cardinal Ratzinger. He was the head of the new uh, Office of Inquisition. It still is there. The Council of Trent, the, the, the canons and decrees of the Council of Trent, that was held back in the, um, I think, 16th or uh, 17th or 16th century, I forget which. But that thing, all those decrees are still there, condemning people as heretics to this very day. They still haven't gotten political control. There's still some freedom, all right, open political control. You say it that way. But again, the New Age movement. When have New Agers ever put Christians to death in mass? They don't. They don't. And I should also add, too, by the way, the cup 
there that's mentioned earlier in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 4, it's filled with abominations. You know what the official Catholic teaching is, if you're not aware? When they take that wine and they put it in the cup and they take a little wafer and they hold it up, they're literally saying that the, the priest performs, he says some Latin words, and he changes that wine into the literal blood of Jesus, and then he takes that wafer and he turns it into the flesh. So in official Catholic doctrine, they are teaching that you have to drink the, the blood and eat the flesh of Jesus Christ, which would contradict three different places in Scripture where it commands you not to eat blood. They're cannibals. It's filthiness. And there's fornication. All ranges of fornication, including the raping and molestation of little children. It's called satanic ritual abuse. That's why they do it. It isn't just that the priests, there's a few priests and they have a problem. They're doing it to, to ritualistically traumatize a child to turn the child against the Bible for the rest of their life. Because in their mind, they're thinking, this is the Christian church that I'm part of. My priest is another Christ. Uh, I just got raped by this priest. So in their mind, they end up hating God. Thankfully, some of them do come through that and do realize, no, that the Catholic church isn't Christ's church. Uh, it's a wicked satanic church and they do get saved. I pray you do if you're a Catholic out there. It wasn't Jesus Christ or his church that did horrible things to you. All right, again, why are the New Agers blamed for this? Where's the outcry among supposed Protestant churches? Where's it at? Oh, uh, well, if actually you do the research on that too, most of the mainline mainstream Protestant churches, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, the Methodists, have all signed agreements to go back under Vatican control. But it's those, those wicked New Agers. Just pound the pulpit and scream about the New Age movement. Bad. And of course, a lot of these same church building people are condemning me right now because I'm preaching out here. And I'm saying I'm in church right now. And I'm closer to God here than I am in one of their stupid pagan buildings. And they are pagan, by the way. The Greek Parthenon, and then you put the Egyptian obelisk on the top and call it a steeple. No such scripture anywhere in there. No scripture in the King James Bible telling anybody to go to church. Not one verse of scripture. Finally, one more here. Put my notes in here before they blow away. Actually a pretty calm day today. It's not real bad up here. Um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Another one of the big reasons, one of the big proofs whereby you can prove that the New Agers are not the ones behind the New World Order, it's the Catholic Church, is the fact that the Bible plainly teaches that the Antichrist that's coming and his one world government, he's going to sit on a throne and claim to be God. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3-4. through four. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. It's names for the Antichrist. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Exactly how the Pope does currently. When the Pope speaks from the chair, it's called ex cathedra. It is literally saying from the mouth of God. The Pope claims the title of God. He claims the title of the Holy Father. Only one verse of Scripture in the entire King James Bible says Holy Father, and it's in reference to Almighty God, not to some wicked, sinful man down on the earth. And they say, well, the Catholics will say, well, you know, uh, the Pope is God when he makes official statements, ex cathedra statements, but other times he might say things that don't exactly line up with the Scriptures or even church tradition, and we can kind of excuse that. Um, then he's not God. God cannot lie, according to the Scriptures. But the Pope can. He's not God. And the Antichrist that's coming, uh, he's not going to be God either. And he's not going to be a New Ager. He's going to be a Roman Catholic. A hardcore Roman Catholic. And I had a video out. There's a TV show that came out, at HBO or something, I think, called The Young Pope. And I had a video showing this is the guy that they're going to be, not that particular actor, but this is what they're planning. There, it's called predictive programming. All right, they are actually showing what they're going to do. See, for years and years and years, the popes have been these little milk toast kind of nice guys, and oh, I'm just an old grandfather, I'm just an old grandpa, you know. 
And you say, well, how could a guy like that be radical enough to, to rule the world? Well, he couldn't. But they're waiting for the right man to come that he's going to be radical. And I believe he's going to look like the paintings of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ certainly never posed for a painting, the real Jesus Christ of the Bible. And you read back in Isaiah chapter 53, it talks about, you know, when we see him, there's no beauty in him that we should, you know, you know, basically, you know, be attracted to him. He was not an attractive man. And yet these paintings, it's an attractive man with long flowing hair. That's not Jesus. And again, a lot of the New Agers have fell and fallen into this thing of saying, well, New Age, you know, we have a New Age Jesus. Jesus is a great teacher and things like that. Um, no, Jesus is God. Jesus is holy, completely God. And again, the Catholics have created a teaching called the Trinity, whereby they teach that Jesus is not 100% God. He's merely one of three gods. He's God the Son. And then you have God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. There's three gods, and then they say, through philosophical reasoning that they're three, but they're actually one in essence. It's just insanity when the Bible doesn't teach it. The Bible teaches in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, that in Him, in Jesus Christ, in other words, in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's body, soul, and spirit, three in one. We are made in the image of God. Do you see three of me standing here? No. Are there three of you standing there or sitting there? No. But I do have a body, I have a soul, and I have a spirit, just like God does. Jesus Christ is the body, God the Father is the soul, and the Holy Ghost is the spirit. Simple. And let me just say this, if you are a New Ager out there, um, like I said earlier, study the King James Bible. Don't waste your time on the new ones because they come from the Vatican. This one here is condemned by the Catholic Church. I've known, I've met countless Catholics and they tell me growing up in the Catholic schools, they were told you can read any Bible, but don't you dare read the King James Bible. There's a reason for that because this is a Syrian Bible in the New Testament. The Catholic Bibles are from Egypt, Alexandria, Egypt, where a lot of the ancient Gnostics and philosophers and things were, and they changed a lot of the scriptures. Um, but what you'll see if you're a New Ager you will start to realize when you really get into true Bible-believing Christianity, not the fake junk that comes, on, comes in the church buildings and all that other stuff. No, that's not, that's not real. You won't find that in here. What you'll find is a lot of the things that people in the New Age movement are into are spoken about positively in here. Natural healing. I know a lot of New Agers that are very much in a natural healing and very much against the medical establishment. So is the Bible. The Bible talks about a woman that went to the doctors for years and years and years and she wasn't any better and in fact had gotten worse. Just like the medical establishment of today. The Bible talks about herbs for the healing of man and a lot of things like that. Okay, you say, what about new age? What about a new age coming, a new world coming? Um, well, the Bible teaches that, that they're not a new age, but the Bible teaches that there would be a new world where there's gonna, you know, God, the creator, Jesus Christ is going to come down and he's going to restore this earth. He's going to get rid of all the pollution and everything else. And funny, because a lot of new age people get into environmental activism. And if you study the King James Bible again, in the book of Revelation, you'll see that there's actually a passage of scripture where the Lord himself says that he's going to destroy them that destroy the earth. All the people with, with all the, the, you know, I mean, poisoning things and, and you know, geoengineering and, and, I mean, just go on and on, the fracking and the, and the wars and the depleted uranium being used as ammunition. And the, I mean, you can go so many things. It's just terrible. In fact, where I'm standing right here, if you go north a few miles, there's a, a mountain called Mount Pickett. And there actually, there's a company in Canada called Wolfden, and they actually purchased the mountain. How can a Canadian company purchase a mountain in Maine, in the United States? But they're planning on drilling in this mountain, and one of the things that they're going to inject in there with their drilling to get the ore out, they're going to be injecting arsenic into the mountain if it goes through. God's going to destroy this thing. So if you're a new ager and you go to some Christian church someplace and you hear these idiots in there going, Amen, praise the Lord, let's take away the oil from those Arabs and things. Um, those aren't Christians. Okay, They are church building people. And in reality, if you really study it out, most of them are Catholic, okay? Maybe not in name, but they are in practice. So please, if you are a new ager, don't be turned off by the Bible, all right? 
Christianity is a big turnoff to a lot, a lot of New Agers. I, I understand why, because it's fake. Most of the people that are Christians, professing Christians are fake, completely fake. Um, but what you need to do is you need to understand that Jesus Christ is not the one that they worship. You study this King James Bible, you'll see a completely different Jesus. And when the Bible attacks things and calls it sin, it's because those things are negative. And I've, again, I've met some New Agers that understand a lot of those things that they don't mess around with, with doing a lot of illicit drugs or drinking like crazy, that, you know, his drunkenness or whatever else. Uh, you know, a lot of things like that. You submit yourself to the book, to the Word of God. And, you know, my advice to you is read the Bible. Study the Bible. Study the videos that we put out. I am not a church-building advocate. And uh, what more can I say? Um... To just briefly explain what salvation is, if you're interested in that, um, salvation is in a man. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God. And what happened is, He gave, He created this earth. Beautiful, amazing. And uh, He gave man a free will. And said, you can do what you want down there. And man chose in his free will to sin, to do things wickedly, to murder and to lie, and to steal, and to cheat, and all the other things. And we have to put up with it. No matter how good a person you are, you're still going to have to put up with wicked people out there. People that are trying to steal from you, or whatever else. And you can, you can say, well, I believe in things being positive, and whatever else. But you know what? You wake up eventually, and you realize, uh, things aren't getting any better. They're getting worse. Okay, they're getting worse in a hurry. And there's not going to be some thing that happens and all of a sudden everybody can think the same and we can all get along. That's nonsense. All right. Um, although I will say that when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to this earth, after the Antichrist shows up, after that time, Jesus comes back, the true Jesus Christ, and he's going to rule and reign on this earth. And he will teach people his ways. And as far as uh, becoming godlike or whatever else, well, if you're saved, you will be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And again, there's a whole lot of, this is major deep stuff. Uh, I'm only scratching the surface here, but salvation is very simple. It's an extremely easy thing to understand. When you get saved, you become a new creature. The Holy Spirit of God actually moves within your body. You are born again. As the Bible says in the, in the book of John chapter 3, you must be born again. And most people have never experienced the spiritual rebirth. They are still old in their, in their sins and everything else. That's why they have to have their religion to make themselves feel good about one another. Uh, they're not born again. But you come to the Lord and you say, okay, you open up this book and you read and you say, you know what, this book says that I'm a sinner. This book condemns some of the things I've done. I've done some wicked things before God. I can't save myself. I can't be a good person and help an old lady across the road and help her put her groceries in the back seat of her car or something like that. That's not going to get me in good standing with God. Those are good things to do, but it's not going to get me in good standing with God. Jesus Christ came in the first century and he offered himself to the Jews of his time as their king and they crucified him. They put him to death. And that blood that he shed on the cross, is it can wash away your sins. But you say, oh, I can't see it. Yeah, that's where faith comes in. God had grace for you and for me knowing we're sinners, and yet providing a way out of it. And, of course, you know, you go to heaven when you die as well as a Christian. Like I said, there's a whole lot of stuff here. But the whole point is, get a King James Bible, read it, and call upon the name of the Lord. Just pray and say, Jesus, I want to know the truth. One of his titles is the truth, by the way. It's kind of interesting. But you say, Jesus, I want to know the truth. I want you to show me the truth and you sincerely mean that, He'll bring you into the truth. He'll show you things. Again, I, a lot of New Agers are very much awake to things like natural healing and natural living techniques and natural fibers that you wear and, and whatever else. There's a lot of things I've seen New Agers are very awake to. But most of them, they look at Christianity as Catholicism and they say, I don't, eh, don't want anything to do with it. Never realizing if they would just pick up a King James Bible and read it for themselves, all of a sudden they'd realize, hey, you know what? There is no Catholic, word Catholic in the King James Bible. There's no Pope. There's no monk. There's no nun. There's no sacrament. There's no cathedral. 
And all of a sudden you start to realize, hey, you know what? Maybe Christianity isn't so bad after all. Maybe I can come out to a place like this, a beautiful place like this, and worship God in His creation. Not in some stupid building someplace that man made. Watch our other videos. If you have other questions that I haven't ever covered or whatever else, then contact me. Uh, get a hold of me. But get your eternity figured out. Thank you for watching.